and welcome to the Global Thinkers Forum podcast conversation with change makers. Global Thinkers Forum is an international non-profit organization founded by Elizabeth Filippoli with the timely mission to nurture accountability in leadership and support youth and women through mentorship. The organization is a non-political and non-partisan. I am Yolanda Mabuto, the founder and director of Divine Growth Solution, an organization based in South Africa and affiliated with the Global Thinkers Forum. I am the guest host in this episode and will be in conversation with Tamiko Kwea, CEO and founder of Pursue Your Papers, the international business strategist, speaker, and an expert in coaching emerging entrepreneurs. The coronavirus pandemic is causing large-scale loss of life and severe human and economic suffering globally and directly impacts the GDPs of each country. This discussion rather is not about the negative side of COVID-19, but rather how do we bounce back and resume operation in the world that is waiting for us out there. We will be sharing on how businesses can calibrate after this global crisis and how affected emerging countries are by COVID-19. Tamiko, welcome and please share with us your involvement with the women, particularly in Africa and what attracted you to focus in developing women from emerging countries. Well, thank you, first of all, Yolanda, for having me. It's a pleasure to be on today on this uh, wonderful platform, this global platform. And so my involvement as the CEO and founder of Pursue Your Purpose is, uh, firstly, I am a, a company that is based in the United States. Um, in St. Louis, Missouri, to be precise. And um, my company focuses on um, building capacity in emerging women entrepreneurs primarily, but also in emerging leaders um, in corporations and in the professional sectors as well. Um, so my involvement is uh, right now we have a reach in about five African nations and um, where I, I miss traveling throughout Africa. I'm stuck here in the U.S. obviously because of the, uh, the pandemic, but my, um, my involvement is just helping to grow women in their and helping them to monetize their gifts, talents, skill sets and abilities and uh, launch and grow businesses. Absolutely. And I'm sure, I mean, having uh, the, the, the first hand, you know, um, experience in Africa, you can maybe take us through how you think this pandemic has affected them. And also you can tell us how it really affected you personally as a businesswoman and how it has affected your operations. Yes. Well, I fall in the category with everyone else. It, you know, I, it's interesting because as I am providing solutions to other uh, business owners and strategies on how to recalibrate after a crisis, I too have had have been forced to recalibrate my business. So my operations have been more uh, focused, uh, shifted my focus to online operations. Um, I've consolidated my teams and, and uh, focused on uh, the operations that uh, uh, impact my, my bottom line mostly. And so um, I'm speaking from firsthand experience when I'm reaching out to, uh, to uh, give strategies to clients and to my followers uh, on social media. So those are the, some of the, 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 the impacts uh, to my business is that it's, you know, I'm, I'm on stay at home orders as we speak right now here in the U.S., uh, and in my state, uh, our governor has ordered a stay-at-home order, uh, I should say a partial stay-at-home order until April 24th. Um, and with the borders being closed, that restricts travel. And so I'm not able to be physically present to conduct any workshops or training sessions. And so uh, that has forced more of, a, of an online um, business model. And uh, in, in which I was sort of transitioning to anyway, but uh, obviously I can't be in Africa right now, which pains me. But yes. uh, because this time last year I was in Nigeria, and then on my way to Namibia, and spent six months in Africa. So I'm I'm obviously not able to do business as usual here. 
Yes, and you've mentioned that you've sort of transitioned and you were already at that space where you were moving more into the digital space. And knowing Africa and knowing that some countries within Africa are not really there yet, what type of advice mm. would you give women who are in businesses and they're finding themselves in a way stuck because of this challenge that we're all suffering from, how can they sort of move virtually and also making sure that they don't, they're not stagnant and not moving in this current challenge? That's a very interesting question because prior to all of this happening, I was already pushing for more technology-driven organizations. And so I hope people were listening and taking heed to my um, my, my trainings because I would always incorporate um, how to go digital um, in all of my trainings. We're in the 21st century and where that, that is really no longer an option if you're going to be competitive with the rest of the world. And if you really want to scale your business, um, you, you really have to make use of technology. And uh, many people are, are, are realizing um, that they're falling behind um, mm. due to the pandemic and that they're now now out of touch with, with clients that maybe they didn't have an online relationship with or a way to connect. So I think this is an eye-opening experience for a lot of people to realize that our world is not going back to business as usual. So if we think that, oh, it's just the crisis, it will be over, and then I will re just return and resume my business activities as normal, that will not happen. So I'm trying to set up realistic expectations for people to understand that you know technology removes all geographical borders. And even with this platform reaching over, I think uh, maybe 60 countries or so, you know, bringing people together to have these types of conversations in the same manner, it should be used for every uh, business owner to capitalize on uh, new markets, and, and being able to continue their business operations online. Absolutely, I, ca I cannot agree with you more on that sense, Tamiko, because even during this time, if we can tap into this digital space, there's a lot of networking happening in the background. And when we are out there, when we are back to normal, there will be a lot of um, collaboration that I'm, I'm, I'm foreseeing, you know, as you've said, that we will not go back to doing things the old way that we did. But I mean, during this time, we should be wise enough to latch on this networking, networks rather that we've sort of formed during this time. And I mean, I remember you were in South Africa in August when we were launching the global uh, business woman evolution. And you've mentioned that we must move, you know, with that wave of, of technology and not, you know, um, let technology be a distant thing with, the, with us Africans. We should actually make use of it to enhance our businesses and grow our businesses. And I think right now we've been forced to do that, not because we want to, <laughs> but because we have to, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I know you're also an, a, an academic and you're also a bookseller. How is this affecting your, 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 your interactions with um, education institutions? How are you finding it? And going forward, how are you planning to interact with institutions? Because again, we are going to go back to the world that is different to the one that we left before the lockdown. Yes. So the, the good thing, the, the, on the positive side, I can say that I'm grateful that I actually do have all of my books in digital form. So uh, as an academic and a, a former adjunct professor of entrepreneurship and small business management, I work with universities to bring uh, my books into the classroom so that professors can teach them as a companion piece uh, in the classroom. Well, Obviously, as the universities are, many of the universities here in the United States are closed, and I understand that this is also the case in many other parts of the world as well. And what that means is that, um, you know, for those who rely on uh, just physical materials and teaching materials, they're going to have to adapt to uh, online materials to teach. And uh, mm -hmm. here in the U.S., uh, our, most of our universities have closed for the remainder of the semester. And uh, many universities have already said that uh, if there is a summer session, it will be 
online only because they've removed all of the students from, you know, physically from the campuses. So uh, school is not in session. Same way in the uh, uh, primary uh, education system here as well, where if you're not in the classrooms, teachers are going to have to adopt new models of teaching. Mm -hmm. and, and that includes Africa. That also includes Africa, uh, where the technology is not uh, 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 the driving force behind uh, education delivery, but it's sort of a, as a secondary. And now I believe that technology uh, teaching methods will have to uh, be moved up to a priority now. Absolutely. And we've been seeing a number of institutions offering different kind of courses. Some are free, some are not. What is your advice um, to women and young girls who are at this point in time on the lockdown because the campuses are closed? Would you advise them to maybe take on those courses? Would they be adding value maybe towards their development once we go back to the normal? Oh, I absolutely do. You know, learning, uh, thankfully, because of technology as a vehicle, uh, it, it's able to reach anyone who has access to a smartphone and, and some sufficient data, data on their uh, plans. So if you have access to the internet, all you need is a, is, is a smartphone in order to educate yourself. So I would advise that, um, you know, that uh, Africans and people beyond even to tap into uh, sites like Coursera, Coursera and EDX, uh, for example, those are some of the top tier um, online, uh, what they call open source providers of education. I, I have actually taken advantage of taking a course uh, through the University of London during this, this time of lockdown. And so oh. I'm sharp. I'm, I'm, I'm practicing what I preach as well. If there's something new that I, a skill set that I need to acquire, now's the best time. Uh, so even as a business owner, as I'm sharpening my skill set during this time and, and hopefully others will, will, um, will follow suit because this is a time where sometimes your skill sets will uh, make you more viable and more competitive in this marketplace that we have. So mm -hmm. even as business owners, we should take advantage of sharpening our skill sets, going online, taking classes. Some are free, some are not. Um, you can get certificates. Um, and so I just encourage everyone to keep learning, keep growing, keep uh, sitting in on webinars and training sessions and, and just uh, educating themselves during this time. Absolutely. But also, Tamiko, um, with this um, lockdown, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of um, opportunities out there. And to some, it's noise. To some, it's grabbing opportunities. What would you advise women? Because we, we know some women, and, and, and I could be one of them, we like to keep busy because when we're not busy, we feel like we're not being productive. And mm -hmm. we very abnormal situation right now where we find ourselves sometimes not busy and sometimes too busy where and how can we strike the balance you know during this time of being busy but doing something productive something that will add value and also maybe allowing yourself to be you know not busy because you you are allowing yourself to connect into whatever that you need to connect yeah. what would you say to our viewers you know this is a very crucial time for all of us Many of us are figuring out ways of how to reinvent ourselves, taking our businesses or our careers in a new direction once this is, is, uh, has subsided. And this is a time, you know, being a very spiritual person um, who prays a lot, I think um, that is a, a, a lost art, if you will, in the world. Um, I think that there is not enough downtime, you know, until moments like this when it's forced upon us then hopefully people will now realize this is a great opportunity to reprioritize, to re-strategize, to restructure. You know, we're in a situation that forces us to rethink, to, mm. um, to silence ourselves and to really hear answers, um, to sit still. It's not a bad thing. You know, all busy is not good. So, mm. 
Uh, you know, you can be busy and still be unproductive. And every time in the, in, in a, a pivotal moment in my business, every turning point uh, was preceded by moments of silence moments of quiet reflection, moments of prayer, where I can really get um, clear. And clarity really only comes when you're not in the hustle and bustle. And so I think that uh, it would be wise for all of us to tune in spiritually, you know, and, and as a Christ follower, I just uh, make that a, a daily practice in my life anyway, prior to this pandemic. But now it's really uh, caused me to take more of an introspective look uh, to see what's, what's a priority for me and what's a priority for my business so that I can move forward with more momentum once the dust has settled. I cannot agree with you on that because there's also um, a part of, you know, mental, you know, um, health that comes with this as well, because yeah. with everything that is happening, other women or other people are taking it in a different way. And one needs to have that moment and just be still and maybe re-strategize and rethink how you want to go back into the new world and how you will navigate yourself. Well, in terms of um, gender equality, I know your passion for women and uh, specifically uh, women from emerging countries and this economic instability as well as the uh, health crisis um, greatly impacts girls and women and it will definitely slow down the gender parity which aims at advancing gender equality across. What are your views around um, probably policy changing and how can we, you know, um, make sure that we still within the drive of gender equality, regardless of what is happening in our midst? You know, I, I have to say that unfortunately, um, anytime there is a crisis, it is always the marginalized groups that suffer the most. Hmm. And uh, women, uh, minorities, uh, are, are typically uh, all they, they were on the fringe of things before the crisis, and now they're even more outside of you know oper lock, locked outside of opportunities in some cases, um, especially in male-dominated industries. But uh, I have always encouraged women to take ownership of their brilliance and use it to make money. Um, and in fact, I wrote a whole book about it uh, called <laughs> "Own Your Brilliance." A Woman's mm. Guide to Hiring Herself, where I, I, I go through my personal experience as well as give a transition plan on when you're transitioning from one place to the next. Uh, there's a checklist in the book that shows women how to do that. Some women have already lost their jobs and are looking for ways to reinvent them, themselves and use their brilliance to make money on their own terms by uh, assessing their gifts, talents, skill sets, and abilities, and monetizing them into a viable business. Um, I, and I, I also think it's just wise to stay on the cutting edge of what's needed in this world so that women can be an asset no matter what. So mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the, the different industries, Women are underrepresented in the STEM disciplines, so science, mm -hmm. technology, engineering, math, um, and also in certain sectors like the energy sector, which I, I know that you're familiar with. Uh, and mm. so um, when women are underrepresented in these areas, I think that regarding like policy changes and really um, universities like the, the education systems, government need to uh, all come together to figure out ways of how to implement um, policies within their sectors of how to integrate more women into these fields. It does the, the countries at large, uh, it, it, does, it does the whole country good to, to have these practices, to have parity uh, in these industries because otherwise uh, you, you face untapped talents, you know, talents that are just going to waste, which could make countries more on the cutting edge. So uh, if you look at it, it just quickly, uh, historically, countries that have been known to oppress or suppress women uh, have also not been on the cutting edge 
of uh, technology and industry. Mm. And so there is a there is a correlation there. There is a direct correlation there. And I think for some reason, uh, the leaders in some of these countries haven't caught on to how uh, creating gender parity in industries is a game changer for the entire nation. Mm. So I, I, I would cons- I would um, urge women to consider non-traditional paths in industries such as artificial intelligence, robotics, 3D printing, uh, uh, cannabis, medical research, creating mobile apps, coding. Those are the, the things that when you look at the trends, this is where the world is going, but we have so few women following those paths. That should be changed. And I think that's the right time to do that, Tamiko, because new um, new businesses will be birthed out of this uh, lockdown, and new mm-hmm. you know, careers will be, you know, um, coming into light. And I think this is the right time for um, young professionals, for women as well, to tap into those spaces that you've mentioned that we sometimes think they're more for males than females. I think the, the bravery is needed more than ever now to ensure that we tap into those space and navigate ourselves around that. And mm-hmm. one thing that I've been thinking about with regards to, again, um, to females um, is the gender-based violence. And I'm mm-hmm. finding thinking that during this time, as we have um, said um, earlier, that unfortunately, the the ones who are at the bottom of the pyramid are the ones who are really feeling, you know, um, this time that we are all crying about. And Mm -hmm. to think of a woman who's being abused, now this woman um, or this girl is forced to be in the same space with the abuser. And Mm -hmm. and, and for myself thinking as change makers and as a women and women in leadership, how do we support, you know, um, those women and those young girls? What infrastructures are we building to ensure that Mm -hmm. regardless of the spaces they are, they can still, you know, get support what what's your view on that what can be done and i know it's different for each country because each yeah. country has its own different context but i would like to just understand your view on it you know it's interesting that you bring that point up because the mega star rihanna uh, mm. as we all know she uh has taken uh, the reins during this time mm. to spearhead an initiative that creates a fund for women who are being abused. Uh, Obviously Mm -hmm. she comes from a background where in her family she saw abuse. So I'm sure that this touches her very deeply. So she has created a fund for women who are in situations right now that they're forced into uh, where they're being abused. Uh, And during this pandemic, we've seen numbers rise. I know I I can speak for the United States I've seen that the statistics have have, have risen uh, during this time, and uh, not only women but also children are also the numbers of abuse have increased as well, which is sad that they're in this situation. But again, you know, when you when we talked earlier about just things like gender parity, what could we do, like as far as on a long term strategic basis? Well, it it really starts with implementing policies where we can allow for women to feel empowered uh, and also to be educated, to uh, build capacity in women and girls, just as I know this platform uh, stands for. And uh, and so does my company Pursue Your Purpose. And so uh, the reason I had even focused primarily on women is because We have been uh, disenfranchised. We have been left behind. And now, more than ever, women are being empowered. But it's not the the end. We have to continue so that women can have options and not have to suffer oppression because they're financially dependent on their oppressor or their abusers. So we want to create... uh, opportunities to empower women, to uh, provide opportunities for them to sustain themselves, to be self-sufficient. And so I think that's an important part of of, of when we're training leaders that we also uh, be intentional about creating policies that include women in 
uh, developing them as leaders. Absolutely, and Global Thinkers Forum stands very firmly um, uh, in terms of um, accountable leadership. That is something that we need to, you know, um, take and make sure that we are very deliberate about because, I mean, gender-based violence is also another pandemic that we should be focusing on because it, mm-hmm. it really came true even in South Africa during the lockdown. More cases were reported because now, you know, young girls and women are faced with this person. So I agree with yes. you of making sure that it starts now but it's sustained, it goes beyond this, making sure that we create, you know, funds for women that are able to tap into and be sustained because this calls for us to collaborate and join hands in making sure that we're making a change in this, you know, uh, global challenge because uh, gender equality, it is one of the global challenges that we are aiming to ensure that we can as we move with the future. Now let's let's talk about um, small um, enterprises SMEs, and I've seen a number of governments uh, in, in in each country giving out funds to SMEs, not really for women, but rather supporting SMEs, and that's great. However, I'm thinking uh, in terms of making sure sustainability and making sure that there's monitoring and there's measurement around that. What is your take on it? Yes, it's the right thing to do, but what else, what can we couple it with to ensure that even beyond COVID-19, women and businesses are still able to be sustainable? Because this could be a bandit approach to some, but some would grab it and use this opportunity to build their business even more. What advice would you give um, women in business and men for that matter who find themselves being given grants but they would necessarily use it for something that is not related to what they were given it to. I would say, first of all, if there are programs that are providing relief to businesses, take advantage of it. Do the work. Mm. Don't let the obstacles and the red tape discourage you from tapping into it. Because, I mean, if I can say that, uh, you know, a lot of governments are known for their bureaucracy uh, and then uh, implementing programs that provide grants and aids and age is not necessarily a strong point of many governments for that reason. So there w- just expect that there will be red tape and anticipate that there are going to be um, perhaps some obstacles, but just do it whatever is, is necessary and whatever is required of you to take advantage of this relief first and foremost. It is only a cash infusion to help keep your business afloat, but it's not a long-term solution. So some of the long-term solutions would require uh, financial management practices on on the company uh, level. So, uh, you know, if you are not able to manage your finances wisely, then that's something that every business owner should learn how to do. Also, uh, making necessary changes in the business to cut back on unnecessary spending so that you can make your uh, recovery during this time as quickly as possible. Otherwise, uh, you'll be living from crisis to crisis and your business will again have to uh, uh, scramble to find uh, uh, these uh, solutions. So just be wise with the the financial management uh, because a a one-time cash infusion is like putting a Band-Aid on you know, uh, an open wound, which doesn't do much. <laughs> mm, uh, so absolutely. yeah, that would, that would be my uh, suggestion on how to make the funding more sustainable. And I think to add on that, you know, um, you've once shared with uh, women in business, small tips on how to run businesses uh, on a very, very low budget, you know, giving yeah. tips. On, on things that they can use. And I mean, now we, we found ourselves working from home and that means there are no rental for offices. And, 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 and what advice would you give to women in not going back to the same way? Because the same way was great, fine, but now we have changed, things have changed. You've seen how it feels to work from home and still be productive. What mm-hmm. tip we, can we share to ensure that even though we will come out of this, surely we will, how do we make sure that we don't go back and doing things the old way in the new world? 
Yes. So again, with really embracing technology, like we've been trying to drive this point home to uh, all business owners that things will not return back uh, uh, as as usual. Um, There will be some permanent changes. We don't quite know. We don't have a grasp yet on what those might be. But taking advantage of different technology platforms such as Zoom or Skype uh, for video Mm. conferencing, Um, which eliminates, you know, face-to-face meetings, uh, group chats like uh, WhatsApp uh, or Telegram. Um, And also Skype has a feature where where you can integrate uh, uh, chats uh, for business. Also, uh, a a relatively new platform by Facebook called Workplace for Facebook is another great online platform that basically manages the whole operations of of, uh, team members and sharing uh, work online. Uh, So it's Workplace by Facebook is one example. Uh, There's another one called Asana. There's another one that I've used in the past, uh, Podio. Uh, So there are many platforms that people can take advantage of to uh, move a lot of their uh, online uh, or business to online operations. It is going to be a necessity for some industries once this pandemic is over. And how do we keep saying <laughs> and how do we calibrate to save our business as we are wrapping up, you know, our conversation? How do we, how do we make sure that we keep saying and how do we calibrate and make sure that we're ready? We're ready for this new world. Yes. So recalibrating, uh, to recap some of the things that we've mentioned would include things like taking a step back in silence, reprioritizing and re-strategizing so that you can restructure your teams. Transitioning to more online operations is another uh, example. Uh, Consolidating staff with those who are more essential to directly impacting the bottom line uh, is a a third solution. Um, I would say a fourth would be uh, hiring more contractors and project-based staff taking advantage of the pool of talent in the gig economy that we have today. There are many talented employee, uh, people who don't have to be full-time employees. Uh, a fifth one would be to diversify into multiple streams of income and, uh, and adding uh, uh, value-added products and services that maybe weren't uh, there pre-pandemic. And then lastly would just be uh, conservative spending budgeting, making sure that you're, you're allocating your financial resources pr- uh, properly. Thank you so much for those uh, tips, Tamiko. And I think uh, this tells us that from this crisis, there will come creativity and mm-hmm. we can be victims or agents of change. And I think change can develop or destroy one so we can choose. I would like to thank you for listening to Global Thinkers Forum Conversations with change makers today. I am Yolanda Mabuto. I was the guest host for today's episode. You can find out more information about the organization by visiting www.globalthinkersforum.org and you can get in touch through info at globalthinkersforum.org. Keep well and thank you.